cup and well cold, for you're the rosiest, the roundest, and the reddest beauty in all spit-head. Oh, oh, red am I, and round, and rosy, maybe, for I have dissembled well. But hark ye, my merry friend, for hast thou ever thought that beneath a gay and frivolous exterior there may lurk a canker worm which is slowly but surely eating its way into one's very heart? No, alas, can't say I've ever thought that. I thought it often. <coughs> yes, you look like it. What's the matter with the man? Isn't he well? Eh, don't take no heed of him. That's only poor Dick Deadeye. I say it's a beast of a name, ain't it? Dick Deadeye. It's not a nice name. And I'm ugly too, ain't I? You are certainly plain. And I'm three-cornered too, <laughs> ain't I? You are rather triangular. Uh, that's it, I'm ugly. And they hate me for it. For you all hate me, don't you? Uh, we, we do. do. There. <laughs> well. Dick, we wouldn't go for to hurt any fellow creature's feelings, but you can't expect a chap with such a name as Dick Deadeye to be a popular character, now can you? No. It's asking too much, ain't it? It is. From such a face and form as mine, the noblest sentiments sound like the black utterances of a depraved imagination. It's human nature. I'm resigned. <laughs> Who's the youth whose faltering feet with difficulty bear him on his course? That is the smartest lad in all the fleet, Refractra. Rip the name! Remorse, remorse. Love has 
But it is a strange anomaly that the daughter of a man who hails from the quarterdeck may not love another who lays out on the foreyard arm, for a man is but a man, whether he hoists his flag at the main truck or his slacks at the main deck. Ah, ah. Uh, it's a queer world. Dick dead I, I have no desire to press hardly on you, but such a revolutionary sentiment is enough to make an honest <coughs> sailor shudder. <laughs> Me lads! Our gallant captain has come on deck. Let us greet him as so brave an officer and so gallant a seaman deserves. Be gallant crew, good morning, yes, sir. Good, good morning. morning. I hope you're all quite well. Quite well. And you, sir? I am in reasonable health and happy to meet you all once more. You do a proud, sir. Understood, I command the right good crew. Very, very, very good, and be it understood, he commands the right good crew. The related to a pier, I get hand driven steer, or ship, or sail, or tea. I have never known the quail at the fury of a gale, and I'm never, never sick at sea. What's never? No, never. What's never? Hardly ever. Hardly ever sink at sea. Then I give three cheers and one cheer more for the hardy captain of the pin of four. Give three cheers and one cheer more for the captain of the pin of four. I do my best to satisfy you all. And with you, we're quite content. You're exceedingly polite, and I think it's only right to return the compliment. We're exceedingly polite, and he thinks it's only right to return the compliment. But language or abuse I never, never use, whatever the emergency. The bother is I may occasionally say, I never use a big, big D. What's never? No, never. What's never? Hardly ever. Hardly ever so a big, big D. Three cheers and one cheer more for the well-bred captain of the pinafore. Three, three cheers and one cheer more for the captain of the pinafore. Sir, you are sad. The silent eloquence of yonder tear that trembles on your eyelash proclaims a sorrow far more deep than common. Confide in me, fear not, I am a mother. Yes, little buttercup, I'm sad and sorry. My daughter Josephine, the fairest flower that ever blossomed on ancestral timber, 
He sought in marriage by Sir Joseph Porter, our Admiralty's first lord. But for some reason, she does not seem to tackle kindly to it. Sir Joseph, oh, I know too well the anguish of a heart that loves but vainly. But see, here comes your most attractive daughter. I go farewell. A plump and pleasing person. <laughs> My child, I grieve to see that you are a prey to melancholy. You should look your best today, for Sir Joseph Porter, KCB, will be here this afternoon to claim your promised hand. Ah, oh, father, your words cut me to the quick. I can esteem, reverence, venerate Sir Joseph, for he is a great and good man. But oh, I cannot love him. My heart is already given. It is then as I feared. Given? And to whom? Not to some gilded lordling? No, father. The object of my love is no lordling. Oh, pity me, for he is but a humble sailor on board your own ship. Impossible! Yes, it is true. Too true. A common sailor? No, oh, fie! I blush for the weakness that allows me to cherish such a passion. 
I hate myself when I think of the depth to which I have stooped in permitting myself to think tenderly of one so ignobly born. But I love him. I love him. I love him. Come, my child, let us talk this over. In a matter of the heart, I would not coerce my daughter. I attach but little value to rank or wealth, but the line must be drawn somewhere. A man in that station may be brave and worthy, but at every step he would commit solecisms <laughs> that society would never pardon. Uh, I have thought of this night and day, but fear not, father, for I have a heart and therefore I love, but I am your daughter, and therefore I am proud. Though I carry my love with me to the tomb, he shall never, never know it. You are my daughter after all. <laughs> ah, but see, Sir Joseph's barge approaches, manned by twelve trusty oarsmen, and accompanied by the admiring crowd of sisters, cousins, and aunts that attend him wherever he goes. Retire, my daughter, to your cabin, and take this, his photograph, with you. It may help to bring you to a more reasonable frame of mind. My own thoughtful father! Queen's Navy, whose praise Great Britain proudly chops. And we are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And we are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. When at anchor here I ride, my bosom swells with pride, and I slap my fingers at a foeman's taunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. 
But when the breezes blow, I generally go below and seek the seclusion that a cabin grants. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his As a lad, I served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished up the handle of the big front door. You polished up the handle of the big front door. I polished up that handle so carefully that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. You polished up the handle so As office boy, I made such a mark that they gave me the post of a junior clerk. I served the writs with a smile so bland, and I copied all the letters in a big round hand. He copied all the letters in a big round hand. I copied all the letters in a hand so free that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He copied all the letters in a hand so free that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. In serving writs, I made such a name that an articled clerk I soon became. I wore clean colours and a brand new suit for the post examination at the institute. For the post examination at the institute. That post examination did so well for me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. That post examination did so well for me that now he's the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Of legal knowledge I acquired such a grip that they took me into the partnership. And that junior partnership I ween was the only ship that I ever had seen. Was the only ship you ever had seen. But that kind of ship so suited me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. But that kind of ship so suited me that now he's the ruler of the Queen's Navy. I grew so rich that I was sent by a pocket borough into Parliament. I always voted at my party's call and I never thought of thinking for myself at all. He never thought of thinking for himself at all. I thought so little, they rewarded me. <laughs> By making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He thought so little and rewarded me by making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Now, landsmen, all whoever you may be, if you want to rise to the top of the tree, if your soul isn't fettered to an office stool, be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Stick close to your desks and never go to sea. And you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy. Sit close to your desk and never go to sea. And you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy. <laughs> desks and never go to sea and you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy. British sailor is a splendid fellow, Captain Corpulent. Corcoran. Corcoran. A splendid fellow indeed, Sir Joseph. I hope you treat your crew kindly, Captain Corcoran. Indeed, I hope so, Sir Joseph. Never forget that they are the bulwarks of England's greatness, Captain Corcoran. So I have always considered them, Sir Joseph. No bullying, I trust. No strong language of any kind, eh? Oh, never, Sir Joseph. What, never? Well, hardly ever, Sir Joseph. They do their work thoroughly without it. 
Don't patronise them, sir. Pray, don't patronise them. Certainly not, Sir Joseph. <laughs> that you are their captain is an accident of birth. I cannot permit these noble fellows to be patronised because an accident of birth has placed you above them and them below you. I am the last person to insult a British sailor, Sir Joseph. You are the last person who did, Captain Cochrane. <laughs> Desire that splendid seaman to step forward. No! Oh! No! no! Not the other splendid uh, seaman. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Refractor! Three paces to the front! March! If what? I beg your pardon? I don't think I understand you. If you please. Oh, yes, of course. If you please. <laughs> You are a remarkably fine fellow. Yes, Your Honour. And a first-rate seaman, I'll be bound. There's not a better topman in the Navy, Your Honour, though I say it who shouldn't. Not at all! Proper self-respect, nothing more. Can you dance a hornpipe? No, Your Honour. Oh. That's a pity. All sailors should dance hornpipes. I'll teach you one this evening after dinner. Now, tell me, don't be afraid. How does your captain <coughs> treat you, eh? A better captain don't walk the deck, Your Honor. Aye. Good. I like to hear you speak well of your commanding officer. I dare say he don't deserve it, but still, it does, it does you credit. Can you sing? I can um a little, Your Honor. Good. Then, um this at... Hum this at your leisure. It is a song that I have composed for the use of the Royal Navy. It is designed to encourage independence of thought and action in the lower branches of the service and to teach the principle that a British sailor is any man's equal excepting mine. <laughs> now, now, Captain Cor <laughs> Captain Corcoran, a word with you in your cabin on a tender and sentimental subject. Aye, aye, Sir Joseph. Uh, Boatswain, in commemoration of this joyous occasion, see that extra grog is served out to the ship's company at seven bells. I beg pardon, if what, Your Honour? If what? I don't think I understand you. Uh, if you please, Your Honour. What? The gentleman is quite right. If you please. If you please. <laughs> For I hold that on the seas, the expression, if you please, a particularly gentlemanly tone in plants. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. Joseph's a true gentleman, courteous and considerate to the very humblest. True, Bosin. But we are not the very humblest. But Sir Joseph has explained our true position to us, as he says, a British sailor is any man's equal, excepting his. And if Sir Joseph says that, is it not our duty to believe him? Well spoke. Well, well spoke. Well, you are on a wrong tack, and so is he. He means well, but he don't know. When people have to obey other people's orders, equality is out of the question. Horrible! Horrible! Dick Deadeye, if you go forth to infuriate this year's ship's company too far, I won't answer for being able to hold them in. I'm shocked. That's what I am. Shocked. Messmates, me mind's made up. I'll speak to the captain's daughter and tell her like an honest man of the honest love I have for her. Aye. Aye. Is not my love as good as another's? No. Aye. Is not my heart as true as another's? No. Have I not hands and eyes and ears and limbs like another? Aye. Aye. True, I lack birth. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you above on board this very ship. Well said, I had forgotten that. Well, messmates, what do you say? Do you approve my determination? We do! I don't. 
What is to be done with this here hopeless chap? Us sing him the song that Sir Joseph has kindly composed for us. Perhaps it'll put this here miserable creature to a proper state of mind. <laughs> British heart is a soaring soul, as free as a mountain bird. His energetic fist should be ready to resist a dictatorial world. His nose should pat, and his lips should curl, his cheeks should flame, and his brow should furl, his bosom should heave, and his heart should glow, and his fist be ever ready for a knock down blow. Pant and his lips should curl, his cheeks should flame and his brow should glow, his bosom should heave and his heart should glow, and his fist be ever ready for a knock-down blow. <laughs> His eyes should flash with an neon fire, his brow with thorn be wrong. He never should bow down to a domineering frown or the tang of a tyrant tongue. His foot, his foot should stamp and his throat should growl, his hair should twirl and his face should scowl, his eyes should flash and his breast protrude and this should be his Customary at the hour. His foot should stamp and his throat should growl, his hair should twirl and his face should scowl, his eyes should flash and his breath protrude, and this should be his customary attitude. His attitude! His attitude! His Happiness, lady, rich only in never ending unrest. In me, there meet a combination of antithetical elements which are at eternal war with one another. Driven hither by objective influences, thither by subjective emotion, wafted one moment into blazing day by mocking hope, plunged the next into the Sumerian darkness of tangible despair. I am but a living ganglion of irreconcilable antagonisms. I hope I make myself clear, lady. <laughs> Perfectly. His simple eloquence goes to my heart. Oh, if I dared! But no, the thought is madness. Dismiss these foolish fancies. They torture you but needlessly. Come, make one effort. I will. One. Josephine! Sir! Aye, though Jove's armory were launched at the head of the audacious mortal whose lips, unhallowed by relationship, should dare to breathe that precious word, yet would I breathe it and perchance be silent evermore. Josephine, in one brief breath, I will concentrate the hopes, the doubts, the anxious fears of six weary months. Josephine, I am a British sailor, and I love you. Sir, this audacity! Oh, my heart, my beating heart! on the part of a common sailor. Common, oh, the irony of the word. Oh, sir, you forget the disparity in our ranks. I forget nothing, haughty lady. I love you. My life is in your hand. I lay it at your feet. Give me hope. And what I lack in education and polite accomplishments, that will I endeavor to acquire. Drive me to despair. 
and in death alone I shall look for consolation. I am proud and cannot stoop to implore. I have spoken and I wait your word. Well, you shall not wait long. Your proffered love I haughtily reject. Go, sir, and then to cast your eyes on some village maiden in her own poor rank. They should be lowered before your captain's daughter. <laughs> Refrain, audacious talk, your sword from pressing. Refrain, though what you are, and who am I dressing? Refrain, audacious talk, your sword from pressing. Remember what you are, and who am I dressing? Refrain, audacious talk. She says I am ignobly born and cuts my hopes adrift, me lady. Oh, cruel one, oh, cruel one. She spurned your suit, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh. ho. I told you so, I told you so. Shall we submit, body but slaves? Love comes alike to high and low. Return your sailors. Slaves, a lady, she ho oh, oh, oh. ho ho. You're only toilers of the waves. She's 
sponge wall, I told you so. My friends, my leave of life I'm taking For all my heart, my heart is breaking When I am gone, no oh, breathe eternal the maid That as I died, I loved her Door, and you the meanest slave 
that crawls the
Is the 
position is far below your own, it may be that she feels she is not worthy of you. That is really a very sensible suggestion and displays more knowledge of human nature than I've given you credit for. <laughs> See, she comes. If your lordship would kindly reason with her and assure her officially that it is a standing rule of the Admiralty that love levels all ranks, her respect for an official utterance may induce her to look upon your offer in its proper light. She's not unlikely. I will adopt your suggestion, but so she's here. Let us withdraw and watch our opportunity.
officially my assurance that if your hesitation is at all attributable to that circumstance, it is unhopeful. Oh, then your lordship is of the opinion that married happiness is not inconsistent with discrepancy in rank? I am officially of that opinion. That the high and the lowly may be truly happy together? Provided that they truly love one another? Madam, I desire to convey to you officially my opinion that love is a platform upon which all ranks meet. I thank you, Sir Joseph. I did hesitate, but I will hesitate no longer. Oh. He is how eloquent he has been in his rival's halls. <laughs>
a lordship. Oh, hey, you get with his lordship. Frank was on the air of the For the man who wants to love. Frank was on the air of the For the man who wants to I think I ran out of gas. <laughs> Sir Joseph, I cannot express to you my delight at the happy result of your eloquence. Your argument was unanswerable. Captain Corcoran, it is one of the happiest characteristics of this glorious country that official utterances are invariably regarded as unanswerable. <laughs> at last! My fond hopes are to be crowned. My only daughter is to be the bride of a cabinet minister. The prospect is Elysian. Psst, Captain. Did I? You here? Don't! Ah, oh, don't shrink from me, Captain. I'm unpleasant to look at, and my name's again me. But I ain't as bad as I seem. What would you with me? I'm come to give you a warning. Indeed. Do you propose to leave the Navy then? No. No. <laughs> no. You misunderstand me. Listen. <laughs> kind Captain, I've imported information. Sing A, the kind commander that you are. About a certain intimate relation. Sing hey the merry maiden and the tar. The merry 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 Sing hey, the merry maiden and the tar. The merry merry maiden, the merry merry maiden, the maiden and the tar. Kind captain, your young lady is a sign. Sing hey, the simple captain that you are. This very night with an extra to be flying. Sing a the merry maiden and the tar. The merry 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 maiden, the merry merry maiden, the much the merry maiden and the tar. Good fellow, you have given timely warning. Sing a the thoughtful sailor that you are. This night with Master Extra I'll be swaying. Sing hey the merry cattails and the tar. The merry cat on nine tails, the merry cat on nine tails, the merry cat on nine tails and tar. I thank you for your warning. I will at once take means to arrest their flight. This boat cloak will afford me ample disguise. So... <laughs> they are foiled, foiled, foiled. Carefully on tiptoe stealing, breathing gently. It was the cat. Oh, 
indefensible. So, Ripple, get your heads to your cabin with celerity. This is the consequence of ill-advised asperity. This is the consequence of ill-advised asperity. For I'll teach you all along to refrain from language strong. For I haven't any sympathy for ill-bred hogs. No more have his sisters nor his cousins nor his aunts. No more have his sisters nor his cousins nor his aunts. No more have his sisters nor his cousins nor his aunts. For you are a fine fellow. Yes, Your Honor. How came your captain so far to forget himself? I am quite sure you had given him no cause for annoyance. Oh, please, Your Honor, it was thus wise. You see, I'm only a topman, what a, a mere foremast hand. Don't be ashamed of that. Your position as a topman is a very exalted one. <laughs> well, Your Honor, love burns as brightly in the forecastle as it does on the quarterdeck. And Josephine is the fairest bud that ever blossomed on the tree of a poor man's wildest hopes. Darling! She is the figurehead of my ship of life, the bright beacon that guides me into my port of happiness. The rarest, the purest gem that ever sparkled on the poor but worthy fellow's trusting brow. Very pretty, very pretty. Insolent sailor, you shall repent this outrage. Seize him! Oh, Sir Joseph, spare him, for I love him tenderly. Pray don't. I will teach this presumptuous mariner to discipline his affections. Have you such a thing as a dungeon on board? Oh, we yeah. have. Then load him with chains and take him there at once! Oh. Farewell, my own, light of my life, farewell. For crime unknown, I go to a dungeon cell. I will return in the meantime. Oh, 
When I was young and charming, as some of you may know, I practiced baby farming. Now this is most alarming. When she was young and charming, she practiced baby farming. So many years ago, to tender babes I nursed, one was of low condition, the other up a crust, a regular patrician. Now this is our position, one was of low condition, the other a patrician. Is my cup. However, could I do it? I mixed those children up, and not a creature knew it. However, could you do it? Someday, no doubt, you'll rue it. Although no creature knew it, so many. Time each little waif forsook his foster mother. The well born babe was rape. Your captain was the other. They left their foster mother. No one was rape, our brother. Our captain was the other. How many? Then I am to understand that Captain Corcoran and Rafe were exchanged in childhood's happy hours that Rafe is really the captain and the captain is Rafe. Uh, that is the idea I intended to convey officially. Well, and very well you have conveyed it, Miss Buttercup. I are, Your Honor. Oh, dear me. Let them appear before me at once. Oh. 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 My father? A common sailor? It is odd, is it not, my dear? <laughs> this is a very singular occurrence. I congratulate you both. Desire that remarkably fine seaman to step forward. Cochrane, three paces to the front, march! If what? I don't understand. If you please? What? Perfectly right, if you please. Oh. If you please. You are an extremely fine fellow. Yes, Your Honor. So it seems that you were Rafe and Rafe was you. So it seems, Your Honor. Well, I need not tell you that after this change in your condition, a marriage with your daughter will be out of the question. Don't say that, Your Honor. Love levels all ranks. It does, to a considerable extent. But it does not level them as much as that. Here, take her, sir. And mind you, treat her kindly. <laughs> oh, bliss. Oh, rapture. Oh, rapture. Oh, oh bliss. <laughs> Sad my lot and sorry. What shall I do? I cannot live alone. Fear nothing. <laughs> For while I live, I'll not desert you. I'll soothe and comfort your declining days. <laughs> no, don't do that. Yes, but indeed, I'd rather. <laughs> oh, very well then. Tomorrow morn, our vows shall all be plighted to three loving pairs <laughs> on the same day, united! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
for he's the captain of the pinafore. And my good captain too. And though before my fall I was captain of you all, I'm a member of the crew. And though before his fall he was captain of us all, he's a member of the crew. I shall marry with a wife in my humble rank of life, and you my own are she. I must wander to and fro, but wherever I may go, I shall never be untrue to thee. What, never? No, never. What, never? Well, hardly ever. Hardly ever be untrue to thee. Then give three cheers and one cheer more for the former captain of the pinafore. Then give three cheers and one cheer more. For he loves little Buttercup, dear little Buttercup. Oh, I could never tell why. But still he loves Buttercup, sweet little Buttercup, dear little Buttercup. Bye. For he loves little Buttercup, dear little Buttercup. So I could never tell why. But still. See, and when I've married thee, I'll be true to the devotion that my love implants. Then goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins. You will reckon up my dozen. Goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins and your aunts. Should play with a 